What's up everyone? Welcome to another Gravity Sound tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to use a slinky to create laser sounds. Now if you're a fan of Star Wars, you might enjoy knowing that what we're doing here is pretty much what Ben Burtt did to create the iconic laser sounds in the 1977 Star Wars films. So to do this sound, you're going to need a couple of things. Firstly, you'll need a slinky. If you don't have one lying around the house, I got this one for about six bucks, so it's fairly inexpensive and you can play with it after, so definitely a good buy. Number two, you will need a piece of string. Uh, we will need a string to suspend the slinky from two points. This is one half of how we'll be generating our sound. Number three, you will need a object to hit your slinky once it is suspended. I find metal objects work the best, so therefore I will be using a metal fork. Uh, you can experiment with other objects, but I just generally find that metal objects work best for laser sounds. Number four, you will need an audio recording device. Uh, for this specific sound, I will be using a contact microphone. The reason why I chose to use this mic over any other one is because I can actually attach it to the slinky, therefore getting a more cleaner, clearer sound. These are fairly inexpensive. I got this one for about $15 off Amazon, and I can definitely see myself using this on future projects, so definitely a good purchase. Finally, you will also need a digital audio workstation, or DAW. I will be using Logic Pro X. Popular free versions are Reaper, Studio on Prime, and Pro Tools First. I will link all the downloads in the description below. We can use our DAWs to further layer and edit our sounds. With the string, tie each end of the sling key to something to stretch it out. Try not to tie it too tight. It's better to have it loose and not directly touching the attached surface because it will rattle against it and affect your sound. Once your slinky is nicely suspended, grab your audio recording device and attach or closely place your mic to the slinky. You can play around with mic placement. I will start in the center. When you're happy with your mic placement and setup, we can start hitting things. Oh. Now when you're done recording, we can open your DAW of choice and import all your sounds to start layering them. For my layering, I chose to stack three shots for the impact, as well as reverse one for a nice charge up sound. Pay attention to where the transients are to help guide you when you stack your sounds. Transients are the peak or spike of the sound where they experience high amplitude for a short duration. Make sure to fade in and out the sounds by automating the volume to shape your transients. The sharper the slope, the smaller and weaker the laser beam will sound. Here's how they sound separately. Before we start throwing on plugin effects, we can quickly time stretch one of our laser impact sounds for a more dramatic shot.
For this laser sound, we will be using a combination of pitch shift, EQ, compression, chorus, and reverb. We can start by pitch shifting some of our layered sounds to add more character to our laser sound. Pitch shifting is a great effect for adding weight to a sound by shifting down or making it sharper by shifting it up. We can lower the pitch by adjusting the semitones, then use the mix knob for taste. I like to start with the mix knob at 100%, so I can better hear what I'm affecting, then lower it to taste. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I usually like to start with the equalizer. This time, however, I wanted to equalize after pitch shifting because I wanted to accent some of the newly added characteristics and further mesh them with our overall laser beam. Simply by boosting or cutting certain frequencies, we can make our elements fit like a puzzle. We can finalize the loudness as well as further shape the transients with our compressor. We can start by setting the loudness with the threshold and ratio parameters. The threshold sets a loudness checkpoint, while the ratio sets a volume level after it passes the loudness checkpoint. For example, setting a 2 to 1 ratio means the sound will be half as loud after passing the threshold. After setting the loudness, we can turn to the attack knob to shape our transients. If the attack knob is set to zero, then the ratio will come into effect right away. The longer the attack, the longer it takes for the ratio to kick in. It is most noticeable on the impact sound. A great effect to use for a laser sound is a chorus. Chorus can help widen your sound and make it seem less flat. We can set a frequency to target, intensify it, and then mix it to taste. I find the higher the frequency, the wider the effect. Just like with pitch shift, I like to start with the mix at 100%. Once you have applied pitch shift, EQ, compression, and chorus, we can quickly go back to our EQ and automate frequencies to add more movement to the sound. We can now turn to our reverb effect to add more depth to our sound. I typically like to use a combination of a small and large reverb. 
because I use two reverb sizes, I can use the small reverb to bring forward certain elements, then use the large reverb to glue the spaces together. So now that we've set up our slinky, recorded it, layered it, added effects to it, I think it's time to finally hear it in action. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you learned something today and maybe gave you an idea how to approach your next sound design project. As always, if you like this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to Not Miss Future Tutorials and other cool videos. If you have ideas for other sounds you want me to create, drop a comment below and uh, till then, cheers. Mm -hmm.